Hello and welcome to the Armory, where we talk about the history and development of firearms. Today's video is going to be a little different as it's going to be a lead-in to the next video, which is the history and development of the 1903, which we'll be talking about why we went to the 1903 from what we had to its final development phase. But first, this firearm here I purchased from my local dealer, um, great guy. But when I brought it home, I noticed a few cracks on the outside. I wasn't really concerned about those cracks at the time. Until I took the action out of the wood and found that the inside of the wood was rotten. So instead of fixing the original wood like I normally would do, I went ahead and bought a new stock, new handguard, which the new handguard had some water damage to it. Um... And as you'll still see, but I went ahead and refinished this rifle. And this video is going to show my process. Disclaimer, I am not a gunsmith. I just conserve and restore firearms as a hobby. But this is my process of finishing the stock on this 1903. Now, without further ado, let's head out to the shop. And we'll get started with this. So today we're going to start by stripping this piece of wood here so that we can refinish it for the 1903 project. So what I use is I like to use the ready strip here and uh, this is the stuff that I've found that's worked best for me. One of the first things we must do is make sure there's no metal on the wood because if you leave the metal on the wood when you strip it, it will take the bluing off the metal. So let's get started. And since we are messing with chemicals, I do like to wear gloves. So with this stuff, make sure it's all mixed up. Because when it sits, it separates, so you want to mix it up. And then you just apply it liberally. You want to make sure you just coat the entire piece of wood like this. I'm using a piece of paper here to make sure not to get anything on the metal table here well, as best I can so by doing this what we're really doing is removing any varnish dirt grime anything so that we can refinish the wood Now a little trick that I've learned is when doing this, go the same direction with every stroke. Whether it's a wives tail or not, apparently it just works better, it gets everything off a lot better. Just apply it very thick that's how I like to do it so that the whole piece of wood is covered Alrighty, looks good. And that is only step one. So we're gonna let this sit for a good 24 hours and then we'll come back to it tomorrow and remove the stripper. All right, it's been 24 hours, as you can see. Uh, the stripper has turned a yellow color, allowing us to know that it's been done. I've already started scraping a little bit off, but uh, what I use is a plastic scraper of sorts. And it just, as you can see, it just flakes right on off. 
Now, this is probably going to be one of the easy parts on this, but also one of the hard parts. Because the trick we're going to have to do is make sure we get all of it off. So, going in here, and we're just scraping. One of our best tools in this to get make sure we get all this off is going to be some steel wool. And really, I like to use really fine steel wool to do this. Right here, these are where the clips go. Alrighty. I mean, as you can see, it just flakes right off. Try to get in here as best we can, get all of it off. Because when we go to put the oil on, to treat the wood, this stripper will not take it. And it'll look very awkward. One thing I've also found that helps me get some of the more stubborn aspects off is actually a little bit of water. And we'll get that here in a little bit. Let me just come. And what's nice about using a uh, large sheet of paper like this is when you're done, you just wrap it all up, throw it away. Alrighty. Yeah, this is flaking off pretty good. Yeah, if you don't let it sit 24 hours, or until it's fully dry. It becomes a gooey mess. And I trust me, I know that from experience. <laughs> this is not the first stock I've redone. I've actually redone quite a few. The strippers are especially great if you get like a, a shotgun or something. Somebody's gotten paint all over it just because of where they stored it. Um, I had a friend who uh, uh, inherited a shotgun and he, has, he, he knew that I redid my stocks on some of my firearms. And he asked me if I could help him out and just clean up his shotgun for him. So what I did on that I did, is the same way I did, I'm doing right here. Took the wood off the off the rifle, stripped it, and from there, I just completely refinished it. Did not use any sandpaper or anything on it. Um, I like to try and keep as much of the history of the firearm as I can, and of the wood, which is why I use this method instead of some of the other methods I've seen um, using using this keeps your dings and your dents that history that the firearm went through and basically gives it its story to tell so what I'm going to go do here I'm going to make sure I get the rest of this off I'm going to go run this under some water Real quick. After I just make sure I got as much of this off as I can. Now, one thing I will mention: if you do, if you, if you ever do it like this, uh, you put it once you put it under water, you're going to want to let that wood dry before you put. If you do want to sand, or even use the steel wool to get as much of the rest of it up, you're going to want to let it sit and completely dry before you do so. So, I will be right back.
All right, I'm back. So here we go. This is what we ended up with. Uh, as you can still see, I still got a little bit of the gunk still in here. I'm gonna use my steel wool right here as well. I'm gonna use my steel wool to take care of all that. But right now, even right here, where it's, even though it's where you don't see it, when, when, the, when the rifle's assembled, it's still there. So we want to get all that out. So what we're going to do is let this dry and come up, come back with it with some steel wool and take care of it. Now, if you're curious, because if you're wanting to stain the rifle or the wood, or if you just want to use, like what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using some linseed oil. You can tell what it's going to look like with some oil on it just by getting it wet. That'll give you a pretty good indication. I'm going to let this dry for about 24 hours before we do the I'm going to let this dry for about 24 hours before we use the steel wool just to get the rest of this up. So we'll come back to it afterwards. Alright, so now it's time to put the linseed oil. I like to use boiled linseed oil. This is what I use here. This is how I do all my gun stocks. So I just take a rag, clean rag. You don't want any oil or dirt to get in this, or you're gonna be starting all over from scratch. So I take it, I put a little, you can use your fingers to do this. You can use whatever you, whatever, like a clean rag that's lint free to do this, but this is how I do it. I just start applying. It's quick, it's easy. Uh, you don't really want your metal on there. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything, but it has a tendency to turn the metal a little green. So you just keep rubbing it in, get it everywhere. Doing the bottom here first side. If you miss a spot, it's not going to hurt because you. Uh, this is just the first coating of this that we're using, so it's not going to hurt if you accidentally miss a spot. And once this dries, you'll know if you missed the spot. We're just going to keep coating this whole rifle down. Get into everything. And then when this dries, this will be a beautiful, beautiful stock. A little more now on the especially on this on this first coat you don't have to be skimpy on the on the oil <laughs> you don't have to be skimpy at all because we set the oil in it starts soaking in I try not to touch the stock, but sometimes you don't have a choice. And I know you see little flakes of, of everything, but that's okay. And when I'm done with this, you won't notice. What it's, 
what it's doing right now. I'm about done with this one and we'll go to the handguard. I'm just looking it over, seeing if there's anything I may have missed. And then I'm going to set it. Set it on here. To dry, we're going to move on. To the handguard. And on the handguard, we're just going to do the same thing. Just coat it up with some linseed oil. Be nice and generous with it. No need to skimp. And if you remember, we just stripped this handguard. So if we have any of the stripper still in this, it will show. We'll take a look at that after it dries. So now what we're going to do is we're going to let it sit for five to seven, five to ten minutes. I usually like to do about seven minutes, put it somewhere in the middle, and we'll come back and wipe the stock off. It's her up. So now we're going to wipe off. The uh, remaining res residue, because if you don't wipe it off, you will get runs. If it's sticky, you get runs. You don't want that. You'll have to start all over again. So we're just going to sit here and just with a clean rag, just take off whatever's left over. Quick, easy, easy peasy. And it's going to keep your first time. The first time I did this. I didn't have much of any oil coming onto the rag because the wood that I was using soaked all, almost all of the linseed oil in it. This one I'm getting some off. It's a brand new stock, new old stock. So it's not as porous as I was hoping, but it's still turning out really, really nice, really beautiful wood. Alrighty, so we get the first one done. Just make sure everything's all wiped off. You don't want any puddling on your wood. So just go in there. And if you're not using gloves, like I'm not right now, you will want to wash your hands when you're done, which I hope you would do anyways. All right, we're just gonna set this down here. over it one last time just to make sure and then we'll move over with another rag another clean rag to the handguard and just do the same thing and then you let it get into these dips crevices just pull it all up Now, everyone is different when they do this. I usually apply the finish, the linseed oil. I do it five to seven coats, which to do each coat, I let it sit 24 hours per coat. So after I do this, I will not touch this again until tomorrow around the same time. That way it just gets in enough time to set in soak in and you're not just not wasting your time by putting more on right away because that's the last thing you want to do because you don't want to waste time so we're just going to let this now soak in for 24 hours and then we'll do the next coat uh, i will not be doing videos on the next five coats. I'll be doing five, five to seven coats myself. 
uh, the next video you'll see is when I reassemble it. As we see here, the finish of the new stock compared to that of the old stock.